Have you ever struggled with crafting effective AI prompts only to see disappointing results? Having worked with numerous AI projects, I've seen firsthand the value of effective prompts and how a mediocre prompt can just hold users back. And it doesn't matter if you're using Olama or any of the online services instead, like ChatGPT. Everyone can get better answers from their AI services if they just ask better questions. But coming up with those questions is actually really hard. In this video, we're going to look at great ways to ask all the common questions. It's all done with a tool and library called Fabric by Daniel Meisler. This could be the ticket to letting AI actually be helpful in your life. When we work with AI, we just want to ask a simple question and hope that the AI will know what we want that it will read our minds and give us the right answer. But then we might get answers that suggest using glue on pizza. A prompt that simply asks to summarize this or analyze that leaves so much for the model to assume that you're most likely going to get something you weren't expecting. And then you come to the likely conclusion that AI is no more than a toy. Let's say you want to take a YouTube video and get a summary of what was said and what was covered. There are a few parts to that request. First, you have to get the transcript of what was said. But the most obvious part is asking the model to analyze the content and spit out a summary. Take a look at this markdown document that describes an opinionated way of how to summarize something. Everything is spelled out and described in detail. It looks like it's written for a human to read and be able to perform the task. And for the most part, that's how models work. Though any incentives a human may need won't do anything for a model. This is just one example of what are called patterns in Fabric. Let's take a look at the list of patterns in the GitHub repo. Create command, extract ideas, rate response, summarize paper. Each of these folders include at least a markdown document describing the system prompt for a model, and sometimes also a readme as well. Even if this is all you use from Fabric, it will provide a huge amount of value. So what is Fabric? And why did it get created? Daniel Meisler created Fabric to collect really great prompts and provide a tool that runs them on whatever service or local model that you want to use. It also provides a few other helpers that enable you to get the content that the models need to do something useful. Everything in Fabric is done at the command line. You obtain text somehow and send it to the Fabric command, usually as a pipe. Then you might pipe the output from Fabric to another Fabric command or to a file to save the answer. So let's install Fabric and get started with it. This video is being recorded at the end of June 2024. And about a month ago, Daniel stated that the project will migrate from Python to, to Golang. This is mostly an implementation detail that you don't really need to worry about. But the result is that it'll make it far easier to install and use. But for now, it's a little bit awkward. So the first step is to clone the repo to your local machine. To do this, you need to have Git installed. And in the next step, you'll also need to have pipx installed. So run git clone and the URL of the repo as shown here. Now change into the new directory and now run pipx install dot. Then you can run fabric dash dash setup. This is going to prompt you for API keys for any of the services that you want to use. You can enter something or ignore it and just press enter. Entering nothing means you'll just use Olama. If you don't have Olama, visit olama.com and follow the instructions to install it on whatever platform you're using. Okay, so what just got added to your system? Well, first, there are a few executables that have been added to .local slash bin directory off of your user directory. So you have to make sure that that's in your path. This includes the main fabric executable, as well as YT for grabbing content from YouTube. Save for generating a markdown file for Obsidian and other tools with front matter. TS for transcribing audio files, as well as some tools for running a server. I'll take a look at those server tools in a future video. 
It also created a .config slash fabric directory also off of your user directory. And this includes a .env file for setting environment variables, an include file, which lists aliases for running the patterns more easily, as well as the patterns themselves. The include file has already been added to the .bashrc file, as well as I think the .zshrc file, if you use those shells. If you use fish instead, and I highly recommend the massively useful upgrade to the fish shell, you'll just need to add that to your config.fish file yourself, but it'll work just fine as is. Okay, so let's try this out. If you plugged in an API key for YouTube, you should be able to run the YT command and give it a video URL. I'll do that for my recent video about two updates. If I just call YT followed by that URL, I'll get a JSON blob that lists the transcript as well as some other things. To get just the transcript, add the transcript flag. Now you can pipe that to extract wisdom and we get a summary of what was said. This is super useful. Another super useful one for YouTube specifically is to create video chapters. If we run this, we get the text that we'll be able to paste into the YouTube description to automatically create the chapters for viewers. Whether you wanna do that or not is debatable. And there are lots of reasons to never wanna do that and, and a bunch for the opposite approach as well. Now, this is all pretty useful on its own, but other than to demonstrate fabric for this video, I never plan to use the executables ever again, but I expect to use Fabric almost every day. This might be a bit confusing. Well, working with AI is almost always going to be more powerful if you're able to create something yourself. And the Olama API makes working with AI super easy when using Python or JavaScript. Now, some folks are going to say that they aren't developers and they aren't capable of learning, which is flat out not true. Having taught both a class of sixth graders in Boston public schools, as well as groups of adults in Seattle, anyone can learn this stuff. So let's take a look at part of my workflow for researching video ideas. One of the first step is to find well-performing videos and get a summary of each one. I can use the YouTube API to get all the videos that match a specific query using something like this. And then I can feed each one to the extract wisdom prompt and I get a report of relevant videos and what they covered. When adding extract wisdom to the prompt for the model, I could just import the file directly from Fabric, but that would imply that I think the prompts are amazing as they are. And well, I don't. I think they are incredible as a starting point. The ideas they leverage in each of the prompts are super cool, but sometimes they're a little bit too wordy to be really useful in all cases or, or really applied to a specific use case that I don't have. So I take the source pattern, copy it to my code and tweak as necessary. Then that becomes my prompt and thus part of my workflow. I think Fabric is an amazingly cool project and I can't wait to see how they improve on it going forward. I hope the community working on the patterns grows and they get even better over time. I really hope that other UIs start to incorporate fabric patterns within their tools as well. There is so much potential here, and I hope that you'll take advantage of it. In fact, I think there are at least two other videos that I'm gonna make about fabric. First, I plan to look at some of the other patterns available in fabric and when you might use them. And then I wanna try out using these server tools as well, because I think that could be really interesting for lots of folks out there. What do you think? Have you used Fabric yet? Are you doing anything cool with it? I would love to hear more about what you're up to if it's part of your workflow. You can leave a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.